Tests are difficult and stressful things. All of us here at CCO know this. That's why when you log into your MyCCO profile, you'll find a little something that we're hoping will put some of those nerves to rest. When on the main page of your dashboard, under Candidate Resources, you'll find a button that'll take you to our demo exam. This demo exam will let you see and use the most important tools we're equipping you with, such as the Highlight Tool, the Strike Through Tool, Calculator, and Whiteboard. Now don't worry, I won't just dump you into the demo exam and then show you a few things and then leave you to tread water. I'll also show you what everything looks like. The big things we'll focus on are how to get from one question to the next, even if we do it out of order. We're going to find out how to mark questions for review later and how to find those questions when we need to get back to them. With this tool, you can familiarize yourself with how you'll take your CCO exam. This demo exam is the way for you to see what an actual test will look like. This is not an actual exam. The questions we'll see aren't actual test questions. This exists only to help you become as comfortable with the testing process as we can help you to be. Whether it be an online proctored test or computer-based test that you do on your own, the experience when you sit in front of a screen will be the same. We want you to be comfortable no matter where you are and however you choose to become certified. Once you get past these screens to describe what the demo exam is and how to use it and your responsibilities going forward, we're presented with the first question. Let's start this off with what's probably the most important thing to know. Hopefully it's also the most obvious and easiest, but let's do it anyways. Let's answer a question. This is done by hovering over the bubble next to the answer you want and selecting and clicking it. Now I see that this is filled in and I can move on to the next question by going here to the bottom and clicking next. But wait, what if I realized that what I marked as my answer isn't the right one? Now don't worry, the exam will let you go back to the question by clicking here on previous, where I can then change this to whatever answer I realized is correct. Once I've got that corrected, I can move forward to the next question. With this question, I'm gonna show two tools that definitely help me in almost everything that has words. Every paper on my desk has things highlighted and other things scribbled out. Sometimes I even have things that are highlighted and scribbled out. It's a bit of a mess, but for me, that's how it works. If you're the same as me, you should pay attention to these two at the top, the highlight tool and the strike through tool. And let's say that this wording I find right here is just so important that it needs to be highlighted for my brain to process it. What I'll do with that word is highlight it and then click the highlight tool. Clicking anywhere else on the screen will deselect the text and show me what the newly highlighted text looks like. The same process is used for scribbling things out or striking them through. I'll select these other words and let's say they're words I don't care to keep seeing or I don't know if they fit in any way to finding the answer and I'll just go click here on strike through. Again, clicking anywhere from the text will deselect it and it now shows that it's giving me a straight line through that text. Like I mentioned before, there's some times where I need to highlight something and strike it through. In that case, I'll just select some text and click both the highlight and strike through tools. Click in the way, will show me that I got both. The best thing about these tools is that the markings we've made don't go away if we go to another question. Along with the new testing method comes a new and improved way of accessing all the documents you need for the test. Now, instead of sitting down to test with a bunch of papers or a binder that's overflowing with load charts and other papers, will be giving you everything you need literally at your fingertips. On some questions, you'll need a load chart or some other supplemental document. With this new system, you'll always have access to them at the exact moment you need them. Depending on the size of the screen you're using, you may not be able to see these without scrolling down a bit like I've done here. Let's see. When using load charts, I'm also going to need to take notes and use the calculator, so I'll open both and draw a few things. There we go. With that done, it's time to get what I need from the load chart, which again, I'll find by scrolling down. The first big thing to show you is that when I scroll down on the page, my whiteboard and my calculator don't move. There's no need to chase these around. They'll always be right where you put them. Now let's look at these scroll bars. Looking at the test question, I see that there are two of them. When I move one, it'll sometimes move everything and sometimes it doesn't. The way to remember what's happening here is that the scroll bar on the far right is for the entire window and the others for the load chart itself.
Now that I've scrolled the window down to the load chart and scroll the load chart to the information I need, I can do whatever math or comparisons I'll need to answer the question and move on. A big part of the testing experience in the past has been scratch paper and a calculator. Because CCO is moving to a completely computer-based testing method and to maintain the highest degree of integrity in our tests, that scratch paper is now a thing of the past. Not to worry though, the exam software has both a whiteboard and calculator built in, so you won't be without a way of taking notes, creating drawings, or making calculations you need in order to pass this thing. We want you to succeed, and here's how we're helping with that. Up next to the highlight and strike through tools are two others, the calculator and the whiteboard. I'll open the calculator and show that even though it pops up in one spot, I can move it to wherever I want on the screen. No sweat, you're not stuck with it in one spot. When it comes time to throw numbers around, I can do so by clicking on the numbers or by clicking where the numbers go and using my keyboard. The whiteboard is where things get impressive or creative. This is where we take all the information we have and put it together to get our answer. This is my favorite tool of them all, so let's open this thing up. Just like with the calculator, I can move the whiteboard anywhere I want on the screen. It doesn't matter where, and I can still use it. And I want to pull your attention up to the top where there are all kinds of tools we can use in all kinds of ways. I have one tool that'll let me draw straight lines, another that'll let me draw perfect arrows, and one that'll let me draw two-sided arrows. Alongside that are tools for drawing things like triangles, circles, and rectangles of whatever size we want. As for text, that's as simple as selecting the text tool, clicking where I'd like the text to be, and just start typing. If I put something down that I'd like to move, that's what the move tool is for. One really cool thing about the stuff with the whiteboard is that if I'm using a computer with a touch screen, I can use a stylus or even my finger as a pen or pencil. This isn't something you need, it's just something that might make things easier. Just like with other things in the test, like the highlight tool and the strike through tool, things on the whiteboard don't just disappear when I close the whiteboard. So I'll close this and then open it back up, and you'll see that my notes are still there, just like when I closed it. So you don't have to worry about things disappearing throughout the entire exam. Exams can take a lot of time and effort, and a lot of times it's time and effort that we just don't wanna give again. There are a lot of times where most of us will question if we've given the right answer to a specific question, and we'll get nervous that we'll forget which question that we weren't sure about. But don't sweat this. We've got you covered here as well. If there's ever a question you're not sure about, click this mark for review checkbox and move on to the next question. If you find that you suddenly remember the correct answer for a question you've marked for review, first, take a deep breath. Second, go to the navigator and you can find that question. I'll show you what I mean. As I've been showing all these tools and how to use them, I've answered some questions, skipped over some others, and there are questions I haven't even seen yet. And of course, there are questions that I've marked for review. All of the questions on the exam are shown with their respective status on this screen, along with a link to the questions. Clicking on the one we just marked takes us there where we can then answer confidently. A little later after completing the exam, it's time to submit. As you see here in the navigator, I've got every question complete. This is an important step. An unanswered question will be wrong 100% of the time, so make sure you've got an answer in every single one of them. If any of these show that they need an answer, now is the time to fix that. From all of us here at CCO, good luck.